The August ST is fast approaching, so here are 10 new ST metrics that you can use to improve your score 200 points almost instantly. There's a lot of tips, so let's get right into it. Number one, back solving. So with back solving, you're basically using the answer choices. Let's say you pick answer A. You want to now work backwards to see, hey, can this end value, right, somehow get me the original equation? Can this like expanded polynomial, if I were to factor it, will it give me the original factor equation? So you're basically just matching the choice to the original form of it. And that you go by A, you go to B, you go to C, you go to D, and you see which one actually works. Now the best thing to do is pick the middle choice first, test that, and usually what happens is like A or B will be less than C, and then D will be greater than C. So if you test C and it doesn't work, and you see that the value must be greater, you can already eliminate A and B and you're done. Or if you see the value must be less, you can already eliminate D and left with A and B. So it helps narrow problems much, much quicker. So that's why I use back solving. It's basically using the asteroids to guide you. A lot of students do it. I've taught every student I've ever tutored, hey, you better do this. It's probably my favorite ST math technique. Condensing ST math word problems is a technique that is probably one of the most golden techniques that you can do. You see, word problems is like the most type of missed problem on the ST math. Math. Because students are like, man, I'm used to numbers. And I got all these words and all these calculations. Oh my God, I can't do it all. Oh. So the thing is, guys, half the stuff on the SAT is like fluff. Now, this is a problem that I just went over with my students. It's like something that just stands out to me. It's like number 11 on the SD Practice Test 2 paper one. The question asks how many days will it take like Tom to read the novel? And it gives you all of these for all these information things, but all you need is like three rows of like the six it gives you to actually do the problem, right? And the big paragraph it gives you, you also don't really need to read that. Like only the last sentence really applies. But for a lot of word problems, if you're able to read two sentences and turn that into a relation, and then read the next two sentences and turn that into a relation, like 8x equals 12 or something, it basically condensed the word problem for you and now you don't have to reread these words. You just look at the numbers and numbers are always easier to read, right? Like reading an equation is way easier than reading a like paragraph. So condense the word problems into numbers or equations, make it easy for yourself. And this way you're also not wasting time rereading the same information again and again and again. You want to substitute variables with numbers. If they ask you a question like, hey, what's the equivalent expression to uh, the given expression? And it's A, B, C, and D, they all have X in them. Well, equivalent expression means no matter what the input is for the original, the output should still be the same for the answer, the correct answer choice. So just plug in a value for X, plug in zero, right? And see which answer choice also gives you the same value when X is zero for the original given equivalent, given expression, as well as the answer choices. And whichever ones have the same input and output result are the answer. You see this a lot, it's one of my favorite techniques that helps you solve problems so much easier. And sometimes they might ask you like other inequality questions, it's good just put in test values guys. Try test values, it makes everything make more sense, like way easier. Because sometimes understanding things in like letters and just words can be really hard, so just try plugging in values into the variables and you'll see how things just open up for you. Understanding key formulas, guys, a lot of people for some reason just don't want to do this. You must memorize every single formula the SAT will ever ask you or ever make you use in your head. I understand that, that it gives you like that paper in the front where it has like a formula sheet, but a lot of formulas are missing. What about all the linear equation formulas? Half of them are not there. Actually, I think like 90% of them are not there. What about the quadratic formulas, the triangle formulas, right? A lot of that is for 3D objects that you need as the calculator section. Well, the non-calc section, that you need to know the formulas by heart. Like, do you know the formula arc length or circumference is equal to inner angle divided by 360? Do you know when to use that? If you don't, I'd highly recommend checking out my ST math course because it literally goes over everything you need to know, tips, tricks, patterns, formulas. So do that. But you can also just like review, 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 and get all the formulas you need to know, you know, down on a piece of paper. Like you can drop your own note sheet or use my own personal ST math note sheet and then just rehearse them. Rehearse, 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 rehearse until you can literally recreate those same notes and write down the exact same formulas again and again without us breaking your sweat. Because ideally, this way when you're given a problem, since you know all the formulas that you need to know for like that, that type of problem, you can easily just use a formula and boom, problem's correct, you're done. Using your answer grids to your advantage, guys, when you see your answer grid, just remember, the answer must be positive, it must fit in the answer grid, it can't be negative. There's something that just helps a lot, helps you narrow down choices. It was not really choices, but it helps you narrow down the way to approach the problem, right? The possible answers you might be getting. And it helps you just understand the problem better. Remember, guys, you only have so many types of answers with the answering grid, right? Because it's only so many squares, like six squares, right? And there's no negative sign. So if you get a negative number, you know you messed up. So something simple as that, using like the SAT to help you, something that you want to start doing a lot more. Because it's something that is like, you're basically gaming the test. Like you're using the test against itself to improve your score. 
that you're a genius. You need to draw a diagram. It's like a tongue twister. Drawing diagrams helps. All right, when they're giving you, you know, questions about circles and like diameters of circles, point P's here, point Q's here, what's the value of point C? And you're trying to remember this all in your head. You're trying to like draw in your head. Why? You have a pencil. You have scratch paper. Why don't you just draw that circle and draw that diagram and make it easy for your brain? The more stuff you store inside your brain and try to solve, right, the more mistakes you're open to. It's way easier putting things down on paper, whether this be an equation, a relation, a diagram, because now your brain is doing less work to remember that diagram you drew mentally. And now it's already on the paper, so you just, you just gotta process it visually and you're done. Process elimination is a go-to technique, guys. As you're doing the math for a problem, just eliminate a choice that you know cannot no longer be the answer until you're left with just one choice, right? This is the eliminate three versus the solve one trick that I always talk about. Let's see how you do two lines of math, right, for a problem that takes eight lines of math. After two lines, you're able to eliminate A, B, and D. You don't need to do the rest six lines. You don't need to finish the problem because you're left with only one answer choice. And because it's a test and you know one answer choice has to be the answer, once you eliminate three, just pick the remaining one and you're done. You don't have to finish your work. You don't get points for finishing your work. You don't get points for finishing the problem. Your teacher's in here. They're not going to check your paper. The college board is going to be like, mm, this guy has no work on his paper. We're giving you a 200. That's just not a thing, right? So as long as you get the answer, that's all that matters. So do as little work as possible to get the correct answer. That's your mindset. You basically want to be a lazy, smart test taker. But nah, I don't even need to pick up my pencil for this. I'm going to just eliminate what I can and then pick up my pencil for whatever's left. That's how you should think. Recognizing special triangles is something that's really good because it just makes some triangle problems like instant, right? A lot of times you might be faced with big numbers. For example, when you're given like big triangles that still follow the special triangle formula, but you just don't recognize it and you have to like Pythagoras theorem or like final hypotenuse and stuff like that. Things get a little complex, especially if it's a non-calc problem. So just understanding the special triangles, right? And like the scale of how they operate just make problems way, way easier. And it's not hard though. There's not many special triangles that the ST covers. There's like two or three of them. So, you know, once you reckon, once you remember them, you're done. Like you got all of them in your brain. It's just like an easy way to get two more problems correct on SAT. And we want perfect scores on ST math section, guys. I don't want any of you guys getting below a 700, all right? You better be getting above a 700. And again, if you struggle with that, I literally have SAT math course that can take you there. The views are great. But if you don't want to spend money, I totally understand. Just use the videos and just practice, practice, practice. Recognize patterns is another big thing. Again, you got to recognize patterns. The only way to do this is to constant practice. You got to keep doing ST math problems again and again until you realize that, hey, I've done this problem so many times, just that the numbers are a little bit different or the people are a little bit different. The words are just a little bit different, but it's the same problem. It's the same process to solve the problem. That's how you gotta think, right? Because this way, you're able to finish everything super quickly because you're like, bro, I've done this problem so many times. It's just like another color, just like another, you know, another uh, person, another number. Instead of plus two, it's like plus five. It's the same approach. So once you recognize that, everything becomes super simple. Like. It's not even a question. Like everything is like, wow, like, I can't believe this problem is so easy. Problems that you should take you one minute, not only take you 10 seconds. So that's the point of recognizing patterns. Time management, all right, again, time management tricks. The best thing to do is time yourself for each section and even each subsection. A time yourself for ST math, not calc, for ST calc, for right, rewriting, reading. And for reading, well, this is a math video, but for reading, just time yourself on the passages. But when it comes to math, you know, you want to make sure that you're finishing the non-calc in half the time. That's your goal. Because, yeah, it gives you 25 minutes, but, bro, I finished in five minutes here and here. You guys can finish in at least 10. You can do that. If you know all the patterns, like I say, and I give you guys a bunch of resources, use them, you'll be able to finish the SD non-calc in, like, five minutes, six minutes, and get every single question correct. Like, isn't that amazing? Like, that's, that's like a dream, and I can literally get you there. My videos, my course, my tutoring, whatever, guys, there's no excuse. All right, you have everything you possibly can get. Right, for free and for paid. So do it. Get that 800. For SD calculator section, you know, things get a little more hard, but again, it's still really easy to do. In fact, you probably don't even need your calculator for a lot of the problems. And if you're taking the SD calculator section and you find that you're using the calculator for more problems than you're not, you're making a mistake. Because you can do a lot of the SD calculator problems without a calculator. Like the majority of them. It's crazy, but it's true. Like only like 10 or less you actually need a calculator for. So with that in mind, Make sure to practice time management on ST calculator section and on every single ST math section and ST in general. And use these 10 new metrics to increase your score 200 plus points. And now that you made it to this part of the video, comment down your goal score. Be like, my goal score is for good luck and so that you can actually achieve your goal score. Thank you all for watching. Peace.